When you think of military veterans, what comes to mind? Leadership, teamwork, courage, sacrifice. And in appeals to hire veterans, these are often the traits that are used as our selling point. But as someone who's crossed the civil-military divide, I actually don't think that this is what we provide to your organization. Even if our military skills are translatable, there are people in the civilian sector who are doing these things as well or better than us. There are people who are leading nonprofits, who are leading in government, who are leading in the private sector, and who are accomplishing great things on a day-to-day -day basis. They involve sacrifice, leadership, teamwork, all the things that you think of when you think of us. So if leadership and these traits aren't what we bring to an organization, what is it? What is our value proposition? What makes us different? Before I joined the military, I was much like everyone here. My lives, our lives were basically the same. And since getting out of the military, again, we pretty much lead the same kind of life. But for a really small period of time, when I was wearing the uniform, I made moral decisions on an almost daily basis. And that's just not something that I had experience with as a civilian. So if this is what makes us different, if moral decision making is the value that we can potentially provide to your organization. What is it, and why is it valuable? When I think of moral decisions, I think fundamentally of trade-offs. I think of things that, as we say in the military, put you in the horns of a dilemma. You're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. One of my first days in Afghanistan, I received a call on the radio from a young Marine, and he was at an outpost pretty far away and he saw someone digging by the side of the road. And so he called me up and he asked me if he could shoot them. Was this a farmer working on their irrigation? Or was this a member of the Taliban planting a roadside bomb? Do we shoot them and then in the morning we find out that we've killed innocent civilians? Or do we let them go and the next patrol that goes out ends up with one of my Marines losing his legs? I didn't always make the right decisions when it came to these kinds of things. In war, much as in life, you can try and do the right thing, but it can have a terrible consequence. But what I came to realize is that decisions like this were things that you got better at with practice. Moral decision making was a skill that could be learned. And over time, I believe I did get better. Another aspect of this has to do with responsibility. When we think of decisions like this, we want to put it up the chain of command. In the civilian world, when we get projects that have a high chance of failure, we want, to, we want to avoid them and we want to put them off on someone else. But that's the difference between accepting responsibility and taking responsibility. A good moral decision maker doesn't defer blame. They don't try and put it off on someone else. They take it up themselves. During World War II, when General Eisenhower was planning the invasion of Europe on D-Day, a few days before the event was actually going to occur, he wrote a letter. And he, in that letter, before the event had even happened, he took responsibility for its failure, just in case. He wrote, if any fault or blame attaches to this attempt, it is mine alone. That is exactly what a good moral decision maker does. And that's something that in the military extends from a general more than 60 years ago in Europe to a 19-year-old Marine in Afghanistan today. The other aspect of moral decision making that I realized is very different in the Marine Corps, or as a veteran, was consequences. When I was a civilian, I thought of consequences often in terms of punishments. I think that came from my parents. You do the wrong thing, you're going to face the consequences, you're going to get punished. You screw up at your job, you're going to get fired. But moral consequences don't manifest themselves in how we're affected. They manifest themselves in how we affect others. Now for me, as a veteran, this was the most significant lesson I learned. And I learned it from a man named Staff Sergeant Javier Ortiz Rivera. He was a platoon sergeant in my company. And every day, he'd go out on patrol with his men. And even though he was one of the senior guys, he would take turns on point. And he did that because he believed in shared risk taking, and he always led by example. He was killed by a roadside bomb three years ago, just after Veterans Day. Over the course of our deployment, we lost five Marines. There isn't a day goes by that I don't ask myself if I could have done something different. Could I have trained them harder or better? Could I have made a different tactical decision? When you make a decision in the military, the consequences are immediate and they are profound. 
they live with you for the rest of your life. But I also believe that they force us to live our lives better. Ethics isn't just an academic issue, and it's not something that only happens in war. When I look around, I see organizations that are becoming increasingly interconnected and global. People who make decisions are now having far-reaching impacts that extend beyond what they can see. They're affecting people that they don't even know exist across the world. And when I look in the headlines, I see that there's a need for moral decision makers. I see things like Bernie Madoff, the financial crisis, Detroit, Michigan. I see people making decisions without realizing that the consequences extend beyond the bottom line, that these consequences impact families who are losing their homes, their savings, and their jobs. So if moral decision making is all around us, and it's something that's even more important today than it has ever been before, then perhaps now you can see that we offer a skill that is translatable, something that has been earned with training and years of sacrifice. It's something that has imbued all of our actions with a strong moral compass. And it's something every organization should be excited to invest in. Thank you.